There's a lot of uncertainty in the markets. Fed Chair Jerome Powell adding to that feeling after announcing a pause in interest rate hikes. Well, some of the uncertainty seems to be uh, in the rearview mirror. Powell, though, saying despite the pause in June, there may be more hikes ahead here to help manage some of the, the questions and give us some stock picks in this context is Tom Hayes, Great Hill Capital Chairman and Managing Member. So let's start with your picks. You, had a, you have a couple for us. Uh, I find both of them interesting. I'll Let's tell you what, Diane, pick. if I didn't shock you in the A block, I'm, I'm going to shock you right now. <laughs> no. uh, so I've got two stocks that are down 80% off mm. their 2021 peaks. Okay. And the first one is about as boring as boring I gets. know. <laughs> I know what it is. Tell the people. This is the Kleenex of home standby generators. It's called Generac. Riveting. And, uh, <laughs> you know, Generac has a 75% share in this business. The problem is, is during COVID, they built up their inventories right. too much because they, they couldn't get inventory. parts. Yeah. And it looks like in Q1 was the trough. So they're working through those inventories. They were at 1.7 times uh, normal inventories. They got down to 1.4 times. They think they're going to be normalized by early in the second half. They're going to be cash flow positive this year. And the thing about this company, first and foremost, because of the pessimism, they're trading at mm -hmm. uh, about 15 times. Their historic average multiple is about 30 times. So you're getting right. a huge discount uh, in terms of the growth. And the runway ahead is monstrous. They only have 6% penetration. And you could say, well, you know, does it get saturated at some, some point? People don't buy two generators for their house. Right. What they find is in the, the top states where they have the most penetration above 10%, yeah. they consistently have the biggest growth rates because what happens is everyone has a generator, so everyone wants a generator. Whereas in the markets where they're underpenetrated, they say, well, none of my friends have a generator, so what do I need a generator for? Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is going to continue. This company is, it could be over the next 12 to 24 months, we think a double after so, being down 80%. And that's because of it being down 80%. So yeah. is this also just like a summer play because of, I don't know, potential for just demand and uh, power outages, et cetera? Is that what Diane, is part of this? I'm going to bring you in as an analyst at our fund because you, you hit the nail on the head. This company does well on the basis of weather events, and we just entered hurricane season from June through September. You get the power outages. And by the way, our grid has been underinvested for so many years uh, that what you're seeing is, you know, when I was growing up, power outage was an hour, 30 minutes. Yeah. Now, in some cases, they're three days, four days, five days. In Texas, yeah. And, and, and when that happens, even in Connecticut, it's, it's, it's crazy. When that happens, everyone goes out and buys a generator. So uh, we're expecting above average weather events for the next four months. And if that's the case, that's gonna be a further tailwind for Generac. Uh, we're gonna see some acceleration. Uh, with rates lower, we're gonna see uh, the housing market start to come back, home building come back, that helps Generac as well. So there's a lot of pent up demand with all the millennials, the young folks like you, 33, housing and family formation. You all are buying houses now that rates moderate. You're gonna jump on that, you're gonna want a generator and that's what's gonna come. He's the millennial. You find me a I'm bank Gen that's X. gonna give me a loan, to, <laughs> we can talk. Uh, I also gotta talk about PayPal though. You talk about millennials, of course, this is like the Venmo season, if you mm -hmm. will. Summertime, you're out with your friends, mm -hmm. you pay for this pizza, I'll hit you back with that money later on. Let's talk about PayPal here yeah. because that's one of your other picks on the day. Yeah, and this is uh, probably one of the most hated stocks right now. <laughs> Again, down 80%. Look, they've got 435 million users uh, around the world. That's mind boggling. 3 billion transactions. Uh, so why is everyone uh, all up in arms? Number one, uh, obviously they got ahead of themselves during COVID. The, the valuations were, were crazy. Uh, right now it's trading at 11 times forward earnings compared to its average historic mm -hmm. multiple of 33 times. Yeah. Uh, this thing is a monster. So what happened is they did this acquisition called Braintree. And Braintree really ramped up the volume, but their margins are lower because you don't have as much juice as you have on the normal PayPal transactions. So analysts got worried that you were having margin contraction, but you were having it's okay to have margin contraction as long as the bottom line keeps going up. And what they wanted it, they wanted it to go up at a certain percentage right. all the time. I'll take tons of extra volume as long as the bottom line goes up. And that's, that's going to continue to happen. You have two other things. Dan Shulman is stepping mm -hmm. down before right. the end of the year. So you have leadership uncertainty that will get resolved. They'll have someone good. And then you've got an activist also to catalyze with Elliott in the stock, Elliott Management. So they, mm -hmm. they uh, are good at extracting value. So I think there are a lot of things that can go right while everyone's looking at what can go wrong. They are, unless, uh, for lack of a better way of expressing it, the what could go wrong plays that you have, yeah. uh, the ones that 
that I guess you're not a fan of. Uh, let's start with Oracle, which surprised yeah. me. You're going against the grain here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's up on the day, uh, continuing to extend its advance. Yeah. Explain your thinking here. Okay, so Oracle and Lilly, I mean, you know, I, I never, uh, we're not short these stocks, so let's, let's okay. be clear about sure. that. Yeah. Uh, I don't think this is the time to be short aggressively anything. Uh, however, we like things that are on sale. We don't like things that are marked up. And we think that after Oracle's earnings, they're now trading about four turns above their average historic multiple. They usually trade at 18, they're trading 22. And we just say, okay, let this thing breathe. It's a great quality business. We get that their cloud is growing, yeah. but uh, see if there's a pullback before you get interested. Don't, you don't need to chase it up here after earnings is our view. Yeah, and then Lilly as well, one of the other picks here, Eli Lilly. Um, similar multiple issue that you're taking? Yeah, it's certainly a multiple issue. It's uh, trading at 51 times, I think, relative to its average of 25 times. Okay. And it's on the hype around Manjaro. So That's what have, I was going to say. Yeah. It has, I'm sorry to jump in. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. has Manjaro. Like, how would you go against this? I mean, these weight loss drugs are all the craze right now. Yeah, there's no, there's no question. But uh, obviously, they have competition from Ozempic and Wagovi. And the stock has moved up dramatically in anticipation of the approval for weight loss usage. Right now, it's being written off label, but they want to get the weight loss usage. So two things can happen. Number one, you could get that approval, and it's to sell the news because it's run up so right. much. Or number two, God forbid, which I think is very low probability, what if you didn't get that approval and it's mm. already priced that in? So I think, you know, again, it, I think the long-term runway is certainly good, Diane. I agree with you, but I don't want to pay up two times its average multiple. Uh, so for me, they're just a, a pass for okay. now. It's not a, they're not great. They're both great businesses, but they're okay. a little rich for me right now, just today. Understand, we need a sale. Yeah. All right, we like that. We like a sale. Yeah. All right, Tom Hayes, our thanks to you so much for this thanks, great Diane. conversation thanks, today. Appreciate it.